Hi everyone and welcome to the design editor. We know this is the tutorial you've been looking most forward to because it really is the heart and soul of Vev. It's the visual canvas, the drag and drop editor, the no code builder. It's really where you're going to be spending a majority of your time in Vev. So let's go over the interface uh, as well as how to customize elements and add elements and all that good stuff. We're really going to start out with the basics here, but our goal is to expand with more videos to show you on how to create immersive content. Now let's go over our top bar to start. The top bar can be divided into three sections. On the right-hand side, you have navigation. In the middle, behaviors and extensions. In the left-hand side, you have elements and sections. So we'll start on the navigation where you can zoom. You can zoom manually by clicking on the drop-down and clicking zoom in, zoom out. Or you can just do command plus, command minus, apple plus, apple minus. Um, and then from there, you can also click on control or hold down control and zoom in and out with your mouse. And we'll get that back to 100. Now, if you don't get it perfect, you can also just reset zoom and it goes straight back to 100%. Next to that is device mode. That's for tablet, mobile, and desktop. Or you can just simply click one, two, three. One for desktop, two for tablet, three for mobile. Next to that, we have preview where you can preview your piece. And next to preview, we have our editors. So our design editor, which you're already in, our content editor, which we've covered in another tutorial, and your code editor. Next to all those editors, you have publish. And again, you can publish your project here. Now in the middle, we have some new things. We have main component, which if you're already introduced to Figma, you should probably already have a good familiarity with it. We will be covering this in a more advanced tutorial, however. We also have swap section or swap element. Depending on what you've chosen, you can either swap an image very quickly for say, um, text or a shape or a rectangle um, that just makes it much easier to navigate between elements and sections. Now, if you've already selected something that has an animation, you'll see four icons. We have attach add on to element. And here you'll be able to choose from our add menu on exactly what feature you want. You can choose between an animation, lazy low content, sticky position, even scroll speed. Make sure to go through each one and see exactly what they do because there's some really cool things you can work on but you kind of need to know the basics of each one. So you'll see this already has an animation added to it, so you can easily access it here. Here you'll see all your settings and you can choose to either completely trash the uh, animation or just keep it as is. Now on the left-hand side, we have our pointer tool, which you're usually using. using. We have our add menu, which gives you again, the whole list of features. We have our add section tool, text, images. And again, when you drop down here, you'll be able to do two things. If you're already attached to, if you're already um, looking at an image, you'll be able to just basically choose what you want. And also you'll be able to choose between our different image features. We have things like scrolling tiny image or image compare, simple image parallax. Highly recommend you to play around and see what each one does. Same goes for video. You'll be able to just do a straight video or you'll be able to do other ones. Lastly is our shapes. You'll be able to do rectangles, circles, and shapes. This is great for creating unique layouts. Um, I highly recommend using shapes or frames to be able to uh, create a unique layout within Vev. So first things first, let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit. We're gonna go to 80%. You'll be able to see this bar on the right-hand side which you can grab and drag to be able to see tablet and mobile. Again, remember, you can simply click your hotkeys one, two, three to go from desktop, tablet to mobile and go back to desktop. One of the things to note is that you'll see these blue dotted lines on the left and right hand side. That's what we call our safe zone. We try to calculate for all screen sizes, but just to play, play it safe, please have all of your content, text, imagery, shapes, anything like that within the confined areas. And that will make sure that it looks good on all screen sizes. Again, that happens across tablet as well as mobile. Now, going back to desktop, you're able to do a, a couple of other things. So let's just look at how to put an element on the canvas. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this big image that we already had, and I'm going to add an image, and I'm going to select it from the menu here. Now, you can hold and drag how big you want it, and again, you can just see exactly what you need. So there we are. There's a few other things we can do on the right-hand side, which we'll cover, like cropping and things like that. 
but for the most part, we're just gonna focus on putting the element on the page. So let's make this a tiny bit smaller, and I think that's perfect, and we'll place it right there. Again, the original one had an uh, animation, but we'll add that a little bit later. Now let's go over the page and layer panel. We have some options located underneath the top bar, like these arrows here. These will let you navigate to your previous page or to the next page, as seen in the page overview. Once you open this up, you're able to get a grid of all of your pages, as well as access specific page settings. You can also do this by the gear wheel next to the page name. And again, this is where you see your description, the path that you want the page to be going to, as well as any previews. You're also able to customize your sharing photo here. Below the page panel, we have our layer panel. And that's gonna be where you're gonna be working mostly. So you can do a few things for organization. You can collapse all your layers by clicking on this icon, and you can easily go through each section. Now again, you can drop the carrot down here, and you can see each element in your layer. Very similar to working in any other design tool. So from here, when you're in your layer panel, you'll see that you have specific icons next to each element. For instance, we have a lock for toggle lock element and an eyeball for toggle visibility of element. Now, if I toggle lock, you can simply just lock the position. And if you toggle visibility, this simply goes away. Again, this is for unique layouts on desktop, mobile, and tablet. So it's pretty fun to be able to use. Next, let's go over our project settings. Now, if you're on an element, all you have to do is click off the canvas and you'll be able to access our project settings. You can see our title. You can add tags to projects to keep it easily organized. You can go back to your page overview. You can change your page cover. Again, this is the view you're looking at in your dashboard, not your social preview. Underneath you have guides. You can see I have it toggled on already. You can toggle it off. You can toggle it on. You can also click in to be able to set them to what column and spacing size you want, along with padding left and right. You can snap to grids, which I usually have on, just to make it easy to place elements, but you can always turn it off as well. Project colors and primary palette, accent palette, and background palette. This is really important to set early on in your projects and a really good idea. If you already have your set colors, all you would need to do is come into here and go ahead and add them. And this gives you a whole secondary palette to choose from as well. Underneath that, we have project modes. We'll be covering this in more detail a little bit later, but all you need to know is we have desktop, tablet, and mobile. These are the default settings for any project.